Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, in this demonstration we're going to go through some of the basics of using ArcScene in ArcInfo. Um, a lot of GISers don't experiment a lot with the 3D um, possibilities that come with ArcGIS, um, but I want to show you just a couple of fun things that you can do. Um, I'm working again with the Jon Snow cholera data. Um, we have the London pump information uh, as well as the cholera death data here. Um, the nice thing about the symbology in 3D Analyst is that you can choose some um, symbols that are actually um, pre-built specifically for looking at three-dimensional data. Um, I also have uh, up here the Jon Snow map. Um, and so when we turn that in, you can see the, uh, the death information on top of it. And this death data actually has a count field as well. So for each one of these points, we can see that we have a number of deaths that may have occurred at a particular location. Okay, so now what I want to do though is I want to visualize these. Um, in a previous video, I showed you how to create um, essentially um, a kernel density um, service. I'm going to use a, a similar technique today, and what I want to do is extrude um, my surface out so I can actually kind of see the rolling hills and valleys that occur in my density surface. And I'm going to change the settings a little bit so we get a little more variation. So again, in my Arc Toolbox here, I have under the Spatial Analyst Tools a subcategory called Density, and I'm going to be using the Kernel Density tool on the cholera death data. So for my first input option here, I'm going to be picking my cholera deaths. And it's asking me for a population field. Now, we didn't use this in the previous video. In this case, I do want to use a field. I want to use the ID field. I'm sorry, I want to use the count field, which is, again, the number of deaths found at a particular location. And I'm saving this all in my default geodatabase called Jon Snow. So I'm just going to call this KD2 for kernel density 2. Um, for my output cell size, I'm just going to round up a cell size of 2. And for my search radius, I'm going to change it from 14 to 50. This is going to give me um, a larger search radius, and uh, but still maintain some of the variation in my hills and valleys. So we'll see down here that the script ran, and it runs pretty quick. So I can't see the surface right now because I have my John Snow map turned on if I turn that off. Now I can see the actual surface that I just created. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I actually want to extrude my data based on the heights that I just created, or on the density value, rather. So I'm going to double click on my kernel density layer. I'm going to go to my base heights. And I'm going to tell it that instead of using no elevation values, I actually want to do it based on the actual value of the kernel density. So I'm going to click this button here, floating on a custom surface, and make sure that it is indeed pointing to my raster that I just created. And then here, I just want to exaggerate the heights. And again, I'm using the values of the kernel density cells. So I'll try 5,000. And now, I should see the hill. All right, so that's looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is I'm losing some of the definition of my points because now obviously they're sitting underneath my surface. So I'm going to essentially tell my color deaths and my London pumps that I want them to sit on the same base height that I'm using for my raster. So again, I go into my layer properties by double clicking on the layer and I select floating on a custom surface and I'll keep that same conversion factor. I'll click OK, and we'll see now that our points are sitting on the hills. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with the London pumps. Make sure that I'm using the same conversion factor, and click OK. Now, I can turn on the John Snow map and see the variation on top of the original map, but I can't really see the streets under it. So one of the other things I can do is just apply a simple transparency to my raster. So by double clicking on my kernel density layer again, 
I can go to the display tab and change the transparency to maybe something like 25%. And if that's not quite enough, I can go back and do it again. Maybe we'll try 50%. All right, so I'm starting to see the streets populate underneath my layer. Now, the other thing that I can do is if I wanted to, I could actually use the surface that I just created and extrude the heights on top of my original TIFF image. So to do that, I find my original John Snow map, double click on it, go to base heights, do the same thing I did in the other examples. And now I can turn off my original kernel density layer. So you may not like this, uh, or for your particular purposes, this might actually be useful. Finally, if I want to share this, I can always go and export it to either a 2D or 3D image. So that's it. That hopefully was a, a quick and dirty introduction um, that you found useful to ArcScene and working with 3D data um, within ArcGIS 10. Thanks.